I'm Sheila, the Grateful Goddess, and with me today is Laurel Inman, the founder of the Institute of Integrative Coach Training. So I am super excited to have her here and we really want to dive in deep in terms of you knew what your passion was in life and, and to get there wasn't an easy flowing path. And so I think that that's super important for people to know that it isn't just the inspiration and boom, you're there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. I originally wanted to become a therapist. I knew I wanted to help people. And at the time, that was the only paradigm that I knew of. Mm -hmm. And so I got my coach training, my initial coach training, um, as a way to start helping people. And I really thought coaching was just this light form of counseling that I could kind of do on the side while I earned, you know, a master's in therapy. And um, after my first coach training, I was shocked. It was so future focused and positive, and I just fell in love and knew, I knew that's what I really was here to do. Yes. I don't want to do anything else, but um, I was in my late 20s, and most of the coaches I knew were a lot older. They had a lot more years of experience under their under their belts. Um, so the struggles were really self-esteem. Am I good enough to do this? Can I do this? Who am I to do this? Um, so I had to face all of that. And um, then ended up going through a divorce, which was really hard because I became a single mom. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I thought, I've got to be in coaching. I have to go get a job, you know, right. a nine to right. five cubicle job. Um, and so that, that was a whole new set of, oh no, my vision is going down the drain. Yes. What did you do to hold true to your vision? How, how did you maintain it while you were going through this trial of divorce and needing to make more money than a startup? Well, initially, so I went back, I did get the, the nine to five, mm -hmm. um, which was a blessing at the time. Um, but I said, oh, I can still do coaching at my job. So I created a position that included coaching and just got creative in that way. Um, and then I decided at some point that it, it just wasn't, I, I just couldn't do the office nine to five. Like, I could do it, but it was really, um, it wasn't where my heart was placed. Mm -hmm. And was it starting to impact your health? Well, yes, because I ended up working so hard at this other job. And with um, other corporate dynamics at play, I ended up getting a stomach ulcer because I was so, I was working mm. so hard, so many hours in trying to clean up messes that um, the company had been making along the way. Mm -hmm. So I woke up after um, a couple of weeks with stomach ulcers and then my boss said, well, I'm really sorry your stomach hurts, but could you blah, blah, you know. You're right. And I said, thank you for your time. I wish you the best. And mm -hmm. I chose to leave mm -hmm. and take a complete leap of faith. Wow. How did you actually feel when you made that decision? Like, super proud of yourself? Like, I'm, I'm doing something for me? What was mm -hmm. the sensations going through your mind and body? So at that point in my life, in my journey, I was still very scared. Mm -hmm. But I knew, there was something inside me, I knew I needed to take this step. But it was still scary. So I did have a very fearful reaction. You know, I wish I could say I was all enlightened. I just <laughs> stepped off and, and everything was great. But I wasn't there yet. Yeah. So, um, so it was very scary. Um, I spent months um, I did get by but I decided whatever means necessary mm -hmm. I will maintain myself and you know in the mm -hmm. household so I knew how to do mosaics I went to farmers markets and sold my mosaics to give myself some time off mm -hmm. from you know recuperate from the stomach ulcer get my balance back mm -hmm. um, I even cleaned houses for a while as I rebuilt my coaching practice. I was doing these things on the side, so I would go clean houses, and then I'd also um, be coaching part time. Yeah. So it was do whatever it takes. Do whatever. Yeah. It wasn't easy, but yeah. so there were months when um, 
like I had called you one month and it's like Sheila my electricity's gonna get turned off right and um and that's I was still in the fear mode still in the fear mode and you and I had done some work together it was like wait a minute this is not working because I noticed a correlation between the more fear there was the more things were bumpy yes Yes. And I was like, I just can't do this anymore. I'm either going to have faith that I'm going to be taken care of mm -hmm. and let that be, or this is also going to create an ulcer. <laughs> right? I was <laughs> right. like, wait. Right. What if your dream <laughs> job can create an ulcer? Yes. Yeah. 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 So I was like, hmm. Paradigm shift from fear to faith. And I just let it go. Mm -hmm. I let the pink slip show up. I made sure that nothing would affect my credit negatively. I paid the things off. You know, I just became very conscious. Mm -hmm. I'll pay these. I know that this is okay to put off for now. Yes. And I have faith that I'm going to be provided for. And that transition, all of a sudden, money started showing up. All of a sudden, more wealth started showing up. All of a sudden, like, it was a turnaround. Mm -hmm. And what did you do to actually apply the faith principles and practice? I mean, were there mm -hmm. specific practices you put in place to shift from fear to faith? Yes. So one thing I did was I did, I started to do a morning intention setting every single morning mm -hmm. where I sat down, I got grounded and I just, I read myself some affirmations like I am taken care of. Everything is okay in this moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I also just started opening, I did a visualization where I just saw like um, wealth just coming down from the sky. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just very lovely and I got into the feeling of it. So that was one thing that really helped shift my energy. But the other thing was an exercise you had given me, mm -hmm. like what can you take on and what do you need to give over to the universe? Yes. And so I'd make lists. I'm gonna give this one to the universe. I don't know if I could handle that one. Right. And that was really, really a good thing. Yes. To just let those things go. And it was also, I think, another exercise that I had to do in that particular moment where mm -hmm. they were turning off your power was segment intending. Like, okay, because just as you stated one of your primary ways to let go of the fear mm -hmm. is to get yourself in a state of being where you feel good and you imagine mm -hmm. everything going in your direction. Yeah. So it was also segment intending. It's like, imagine yourself calling the power company and getting somebody super <gasps> understanding yes, and really connected. <laughs> and, you know, so you, yeah. you can't avoid and pretend that it's not happening mm -hmm. and not take actions towards Right. correcting things you have to get into action mm -hmm. I mean it's not all just visualizing it's a lot of taking the proper steps but it's making sure that you're in alignment with your source mm -hmm. before you take those action steps because yes. if you take action in fear people can feel it and aren't oh, yeah. comfortable working with you yeah. if you can get yourself aligned and then take action that's when everything falls into place. Mm -hmm. And I love also love that exercise of yeah. what can you turn over to the mm -hmm. universe to provide for you. So, yeah. yeah. It was really neat, too, because I, I mean, I'd heard of the law of attraction, and I'd seen you put it into place, and, you know, with amazing <laughs> results. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Why? But it really was just doing it and being. And so way. often that is people's reaction. What's mm -hmm. wrong with me? And yeah. what's wrong with you is asking what's wrong with me because there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with you. Yeah. It's just like, don't, that uh, once again is sort of implying that, that there is fun something fundamentally wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it is so applicable to you as it is to everyone else on the planet. So just get yourself in that feeling good state and mm -hmm. and and I also like how talking about the um, business that you were working in I would imagine you it was really honing your coaching skills working in mm -hmm. the because you're oh yeah like I think all businesses could yeah. use more coaching training within their employees oh, absolutely. so yeah. that there's better communication there's yeah. better flow all mm -hmm. of that sort of thing so I think it's interesting because the comment you said prior to that was, 
I knew it's what I wanted to do, but you questioned your value, mm -hmm. your worth, and oh, were yeah. you able to? Yeah. So it needed to put you into a trying situation where you could see how valuable you were mm -hmm. as a coach in a business yeah. so that it built up your confidence. Mm -hmm. so yeah. every, I, I think that's one of the keys also for everyone is that every step along the path has meaning and purpose. And even if it's really difficult and challenging, mm -hmm. it's providing you some insights or some skill that you need for what it is you really want to do. Yeah. And when you put it out there, this is what I want to do, it's like the universe says, okay, if that's what you want to do, let's line up all these things <laughs> that are going to be wonderful teachings mm -hmm. so that you can do that profoundly. Yeah. Yeah. There's a saying, if you're, um, if everything's coming at you, you're in the wrong lane. And so, <laughs> <laughs> what I learned was that when things are rough, it's not so much that we're on the wrong path, it's that we're on the wrong, we could be on the wrong side of the path. Right. We could be on, you know, we're stuck in the challenge and the fear. And instead, when we, we can shift over to faith yeah. and allowance, you know, allowing things to come to you. And it's almost like turning on that positive energy is like a beacon. Mm -hmm. And it just starts like putting out a signal like, oh, I'm ready for this to come in. I'm ready for that to come in. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. Yeah. Funny is that I still continue to have success with selling art to the point where I was like, I was like, I love doing the art, so I'll just keep doing it. But then I kept getting contracts, and I remember calling you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, now I have the opposite problem. I have so much abundance. It's like, I, got, I need How do you some stop space. the flow of the abundance? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what a good problem to have, right? Right. So um, it was last year, the last tile commission that I took on, I said, thank you, and I'm going to set that aside and only do it for fun now. So, yes. <laughs> just completely let that go and just, and focused my energies so that, um, you know, I was just doing the one thing, and it's been so amazing. Yeah. I'm curious, because I often say, keep your attention focused on the end results, mm -hmm. not all the steps to get there. Mm -hmm. and most often people are thinking of how they're going to do it and all yeah. the steps to yeah. get to where it is they want to do and those are the frustrating yep. things um did you envision yourself as a coach trainer or as a coach i actually envisioned um the logo of the company above me and um and then i also did a vision where i learned from the sufi tradition you bow not to the not to the organization or the person, or let's say it's a client in front of you, bow to the side because that's a sign of respect for the bigger picture. Mm. And so it was just like the um, the logo of the company became like the the overall um, focus of my life. And then I also had my family with me, mm -hmm. and there was just this sense of abundance in the whole the whole vision. So it just became very um, clear simple and focused. This is the, the focal point of my, my career now. And this is where I'm stepping into in the future. So in terms of uh, focus on the end desire, first you, your end desire was to be a coach, then you manifested that, then you changed mm -hmm. your end desire to coaching training, and then so now it's that's... Both. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So you, it is... And that's another really important aspect because I, I think sometimes people take to heart the um, the message, be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. And so they have a wish or a desire mm -hmm. and they go, but I don't know if I'll really like that once I get there. Yeah. And I always say, then you can re-manifest something else because now you really know how powerful you are. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. It, even, if it, even if it doesn't turn out the way you thought it was going to, it's all really valuable and you're still focused on experiences and and training basically mm -hmm. learnings of things that are of interest and appeal to you. So any other tips or or aspects that are super important that you want people to pay attention to? Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway from the whole journey was um, one faith can be a shortcut. 
but two, when we synchronize our life, our inner life, mm -hmm. right, we get in sync, that's when the synchronicities externally show up that start, it's almost like there's the next step I get to take. Oh, wow, that was totally provided. Yeah. There's the next step. Okay, wow, that was provided. And it's amazing the correlation between the two. Mm -hmm. You do your centering practices, mm -hmm. and then how do you know the next steps so that other things appear? Like it's just mm -hmm. focusing on the next step so that the next thing can appear. I would say, um, I believe everybody, especially as a coach, I believe everyone has an inner voice, yes. an inner guide. Um, people call it by many different names. Mm -hmm. um, you could call it highest self. Um, some people call it spirit, but it is there. And um, when we tune in and listen, it gives us guidance. Moment to moment basis, it's always there. Mm -hmm. And if I can't hear it, um, and then I, I set aside time to quiet down so that I can listen because mm -hmm. it's still there. Mm -hmm. So that led to, oh, here's where I'm going to put my next effort. And yes, taking action, um, what is it? The alchemist says every blessing ignored is, can, can become a curse. And um, first I thought, well, that's pretty harsh. But I yeah. began to understand that it's not a curse, it's just... Um, there can be a burden because then we have to, like, um, somebody's going to gift, you know, money. And if I'm, you know, towards something, and if I'm like, oh, no, no, I can't accept, I put up a block. Mm -hmm. And because of that, then I don't have enough to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. So there's this dance. And um, by staying present and accepting the help accepting um, what is being offered in that moment, not judging it, yeah. is what really, really helps. Right, because it's sort of that one uh, story about how the person's waiting for God to rescue them, yes. and sends a boat, yeah. and, and, and a helicopter, and all these things, no thanks, I'm waiting for God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're saying like people wanted to help you during that time because they believed in you, mm -hmm. and you were judging it like, I shouldn't need people's help, mm -hmm. I should be able to do this on so my own. So I stayed own. in the struggle. Yeah, yes. the blessings then became the burden. Yes, as I, opposed to accepting. Yes. And being actually even more um, inspired by the fact that other people saw in you what you were creating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful.